Hey guys, Josh Mall here with Swimming Pool Science, and in just a minute we're going to head on over to the Swimming Pool Science test pool and uh, determine exactly how much water is in the pool. Now, we're not going to use any tape measures or anything like that. We're going to use about four and a half pounds of bicarb alkalinity and uh, our test kit and uh, a couple other little things as well as a calculator. We're going to crunch some numbers and that's going to tell us exactly how much water is in the pool. Um, I want to take you through it step by step, so let's go everybody. <laughs> get the water really flowing so our alkalinity will mix in quickly. I'm going to kick this thing into high gear and run on quick clean so we can get that water really churning up in the pool. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to determine our alkalinity levels and what I like to do first is just get a reading on my regular testing kit here um, so I have like a baseline to go off of. That way I know if um, when I do my real test down where I'm testing all the way down to one part per million if something's way off then I know that most likely I've made a mistake on my on my on my more accurate and precise test. And so this just gives me a baseline. So we'll go ahead and check check this real quick. So I'm showing about 70 parts per million here, um, so that tests me down to the nearest tenth, but we need to get more accurate. We need to be down to uh, about a one part per million accuracy so we can accurately check the change in the alkalinity. Um, when I add my, my bicarb over here, I've measured out exactly four and a half pounds minus the weight of the container, so I know it's exactly four and a half pounds. For every 10,000 gallons, I know it takes about 1.4 pounds of alkalinity to change it um, by 10 parts per million. So. Um, this pool, I figure, is, is roughly estimating is right around 15,000 gallons. So we're going to see if we can't change it by about 20 parts per million or so. So I've, I've measured out four and a half pounds, which should get me pretty close. Um, but in the meantime, let's do our bigger test. So um, my small container here, that's a 25 milliliter sample. Um, so what I have over here is I've got a measuring cup that'll measure me out to 250 parts per million. Um, I got myself a little stainless steel. Um, uh, shish kebab to, to stir it with since I'm not going to be sloshing this around very much. It won't do me very good. So uh, we're just going to measure this out to uh, 250 milliliters. And of course, I rinsed this container out before with pool water to make sure that there were no nothing, no confounding contaminants located inside here that wouldn't be rinsed out. So I can make sure I'm accurate and sharp. And of course, always a big no-no is glass around the pool, so do me the favor of completely ignoring the fact I'm using a glass container because if I break this and it goes in the pool, it's going to be hard to clean it out and all that stuff. But what you got to remember is that I'm a professional and just do what I say, not as I do. Here we go. So I'm going to add about uh, 10 drops of my thiosulfate to make sure I accurately um, or uh, effectively neutralize any chlorine that might confound the test. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now the cool thing is that the dye, um, we just need to add enough. We don't have to calculate out exactly how many drops. We don't need to add 50 drops of this dye. Um, we just need to add enough that we can significantly see a color change. We can see the green that we start with, our starting point, and then we'll be able to see it go to pink. Um, so I'll put 15 drops in, that should be plenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen for good measure, why not? Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Alright, now I can really see it. Twenty drops. Now for the long tedious part. Each one of these drops counts for one part per million, so we're gonna have to count these out. And we figure we'll be right around probably 70-ish drops to do this. So bear with me, folks. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. As you can see, I'm at, I've almost dropped 15. We're starting to see a little bit of a change in color. We're not quite there yet. Just because it started to change color doesn't mean it's going to stop changing color. So um, I've got about... 15 to 20 more drops to go to find out exactly where it's at. So we'll keep watching for that color to change. 
51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, not seeing a change with 60, so we're gonna call it 59 drops. So, of course, yes, know it all is the alkalinity is low in this pool and it's winter time and the temperature's low, so yes. Um, significant ne negative probably on the Langley or saturation index, but bear with me. Fortunately, I've got bicarb. We're gonna put some in the pool. It's gonna be great. So, uh, 59 parts per million exactly on our alkalinity. So, uh, let's dump this and do the next step. All right, so our next step, I've got exactly four and a half pounds of bicarb here. Um, we're going to put that in the pool, and I'm going to try and disperse it, as, or, or broadcast it rather, around the pool as much as possible. But I'm not going to not going to hold it way up here and dump it, because the stuff is um, it's almost as fine as like a DE powder or powdered sugar. And um, I don't want to be breathing it in and getting dust everywhere and uh, losing my amount. But So we're going to just dump it nice and low, sprinkle it wide, and you can see... Notice the water movement I've got in this pool right now. Notice the current I've got. I've got a good current churning this pool up. This stuff is going to dissolve and, and start um, reacting fairly quickly here. So it should only be a couple hours. And I can come back and we're going to do another test. And we'll look for that change. We know what our fixed amount of alkalinity is here. Um, so we'll find out what our change is. And then we can start crunching numbers to determine the exact volume of this pool with plumbing, pipes, um, uh, filter, pump, everything all together. In the early days of mountain biking, bikes like this late 80 Specialized were still a novelty on bike shop floors. You push select when you open the photo. Oh, they got a ton of great videos up on YouTube. I was checking those out last night. Hey guys, we're back here at the pool. We've been letting the water mix around and do its thing and circulate. Um, so we should see a pretty solid change in our alkalinity levels. And uh, once we get those numbers crunched and written down, we'll be able to go back and uh, do a little bit of math and uh, figure out exactly how many gallons this pool holds along with all the plumbing filter the pump and everything so uh let's get to it guys and let's check our uh let's check our alkalinity levels one more time all right guys so i got my two water samples here i'm gonna do another quick check with this guy here so we can make sure that um we kind of have a, a a general number that we're trying to get to here and then i'll know so we'll just start with this again two drops of chlorine neutralizer Five drops of our indicator. One, two, three, four, five. And let's count how many drops of sulfuric acid it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No change after 10, so that means 90 parts per million. It's somewhere between 80 and 90 parts per million um, is what we should expect to see here um, when we do our, our test. So let's get that underway because it's getting dark and the world seems to be against me today. So let's see if we can do this one more time. All right, let's go about 10 drops of our chlorine neutralizer in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 9, 10. 11, 12 for good measure because I'm feeling wild and crazy and generous. I'm gonna do 20 drops of this because I did 20 drops on my first test just for consistency's sake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 drops of indicator. Okay, let's start counting one part per million of each of our sulfuric acid. That's gonna take us to somewhere between 80 and 90 parts per million. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and five, 56. Now as I'm doing this, you'll see um, magenta start to appear um, longer and longer. That tells us we're getting closer and closer as it, as it, as it, as it mixes in. 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Staying more and more going from green to magenta now. 
71, 72, 73. So I've got to take it a little bit slower with my drops because we're getting closer. 74, 75, 76, 77, turning magenta, but I'm still seeing color changing. 78, 79, 80, 81. Oops. 82. 83. 84. 85. Alright, no color change at 85. That tells me I'm at 84 parts per million on my alkalinity. So that matches up with what we saw here, somewhere between 80 and 90. I've got 84 parts per million. Um, so uh, now that we got that figured out, uh, we know our starting point and our end point. Uh, it's time to head back to the desk and let's crunch some numbers, everybody. All right, guys, let's go over the numbers. So um, as we talked about earlier, the amount of baking soda or bicarb we, um, we used in the pool was exactly four and a half pounds that I measured out minus the weight of the container. Um, before we got started, our alkalinity, our starting alkalinity, 59 parts per million. Our ending alkalinity... 84 parts per million. Now, the cool guys over at On Balance Pools have worked out the math on this and um, have developed a constant. So if you're using um, bicarb slash baking soda, um, we're going to use a constant of 71,400 uh, to crunch the numbers, and that's going to um, help us find our gallons per, our gallons per volume. So uh, here we go. So here is the basic formula. We take our constant times... The amount of baking soda that we use, so four and a half, so 71,400 times our four and a half pounds of baking soda. And then we divide that by our change in alkalinity. So 84 parts per million minus our, our starting point of 59 parts per million. And uh, so that gives us 321,300 divided by 25 parts per million change in alkalinity. Now, if we crunch those numbers, dividing 321,300 by 25, that gives us an exact number of 12,840 gallons. Um, now it's a good idea to just round up to the nearest, um, either the nearest hundred or, or even easily the nearest thousand gallons um, above, not below. Um, so you can just call it um, 12,900 or 13,000 gallons. So um, that's basically how we work it out. So it's our... Um, our baking soda constant, which you can find all these constants depending whether you can use acid or if you can use bicarb or baking soda. All these constants are located at www.poolhelp.com. That's On Balance's website. And they've got a lot of great resources there if you really want to dive deep into water chemistry and pool surfaces and things. Um, um, www.poolhelp.com, On Balance's website, is a great resource for that. So check that out, guys. So, all right, we know now. Uh, the swimming pool science test pool is, uh, we'll call it, uh, I'll call it 12,900 gallons. And uh, so we'll use that for um, for all our dosing there um, when we're setting our flow rates for our variable speed pump that we have on there and all that good stuff. So guys, I hope it helps. And um, this will work on just about anything. If you want to um, find the volume of your bathtub, how much water is your bathtub hold? How much water is your toilet hold? You want to find out how much water is in a cup of water? I don't know. Um, this system will work and you can use it with baking soda and your simple test kit. So, um, thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.